clean your room. They say, already did. I say, go to sleep. They say, why? I pick my battles, but not on important stuff like teeth. My teeth, of course, they're healthy. I'm a Crest kid, so my Crest kids use Crest cavity protection. Some cavity-prone places can weaken. That's where Crest fluoride penetrates and, over time, can strengthen them. And strong teeth help build strong kids. Behind that healthy smile, there's a Crest kid. Some say Austin, Texas is like butter sliding down the side of a baked potato, wrapped tight in tinfoil, nestled in the last red-hot embers of a lone cowboy's campfire. There's got to be a couple of good stories coming out of a town like that. Austin Stories. Every week, a different story. At the 10 spot. Only on MTV. Hey, Austin Stories on Charter Communications. Watch it. favorites I am I cry but this great Neil Diamond collection is not in stores hello order now call 1-800-527-2299 to save COD charges use your credit card or send check or money order for $19.98 for cassettes or $24.98 for two CDs plus $3.50 shipping to Neil Diamond Department 1 Richmond Virginia Join us for the Super Collectors. We do it every day at 1 o'clock. Some of the best hits of personal FX. It's the Super Collectors every day. Welcome back to Personal FX, the collectibles show. Joining us now in the apartment is Richard Weinstein from Authorized Repair Service here in New York City. Richard, thank you so much for stopping You're by. You're very welcome. Glad now, to be here. when you talk about uh, figural cigarette lighters, when did these first hit the market? When did they first become available to us? They started around the early 1900s when the invention of the flint. Now, there's really two categories with figural cigarette lighters. Let's talk about the first one. What do we have right. here? Here we have a selection of strikers, which are the first of the uh, flint lighters. And these were basically like matches. You'd pull out a rod and strike it. And once in a while, it would work, and sometimes it wouldn't. <laughs> There. there. Right. So that's obviously that's called a striker. That's a striker. All right. And there's a second category. What is that? Uh, mechanical lighters, after uh, people got tired of not being able to light them too well, they became mechanical and Very interesting. worked the first time. Is, is one more collectible than the other? No, there are certain people that are just uh, into strikers and certain people into mechanical and certain people into animals, figurals, all kinds of different uh, types. What about brand names? Is that a good thing? Brand names are very important. Uh, names like Ronson, like Dunhill, Cartier. What is this one here? This is a Ronson lighter and it was made uh, in the 30s and it would uh, sit on somebody's desk who loved uh, dogs. What's the value of this one today? This one is about a thousand dollars. No kidding. What about this brand name here? What is this? This is Dunhill. This was uh, made in the 50s. It uh, simulates a fish tank and it's very interesting lighter, very collectible. It's worth about $1,200. These can be really valuable, but if somebody wants to collect figural cigarette lighters, they don't have to pay a thousand no, or $1,200. No, you can, uh, you can start with uh, these type of lighters. These are silent flames. They work on batteries. Quite unusual. You pull out this rod and it would actually light. That is great. Almost what, like magic. What's, what's the value of this one? This is about $65. $65. So you can start low. You know, you look at these, if we can just take a pan and just take a look at, at some of these, they really are like works of art. I'm they guessing are. that that was deliberate. Why did that happen? Well, they made lighters for every possible function and room. If you were a stockbroker, you would get this ticker tape. Show me this one. What is, what is this, this one is, like? And uh, can I find these today, by the way? You can go to flea markets, antique shows, find them, pull up. You got your place for your cigarettes, and then you pull the top, and you got your lighter. And generally, I can find them, I guess, from $65 up to $1,200. Yeah, if you're lucky enough, you could find them for 5 bucks. And really cross-collectible yeah, as well. Absolutely. This is, one more before we go. Sure. Show me these. I love these. Tell me about these. These are uh, made by Evans. These are bone china made from in the 50s and approximately 85 to 100 dollars a piece. That is fantastic. Richard, thank you so much You're for showing welcome. us these. These My are pleasure. really something very collectible and a lot of fun too. Right. Thank All you right. Very much. Claire, I am sending this your way so we can get to that mailbag. Absolutely. Not your typical cigarette lighters, though. I haven't seen ones like those. Have you? Very fancy. Mm-hmm. Okay, turning to the mailbag, we have a letter that was written by Judy, who 
writes to us from Corona, California, and Judy says enclosed are pictures of an RKO movie distribution catalog from 1940 to 41. The catalog contains 26 pages, listing 40 movies and 13 shorts. It also has a page of pictures showing the producers and directors of the time. It is a hardcover book in good condition and measures 11 and a half inches by 14 and a half inches. It was sent to the theater owners at the time to describe upcoming movies. Any information would be great. What do you think, guys? Well, she's right. That's what this was absolutely uh, used for. It was the way that they communicated uh, what movies were coming up and mm -hmm. I guess what the uh, various theaters could select uh, for uh, showing their particular public. I guess a lot has to do with what movies are actually pictured inside. You know, perhaps if you had a Gone with the Wind, a Frankenstein, a Citizen Kane, real classic pictures, that would elevate the value of this particular piece. Yeah, you're probably right. Again, I don't know all of the right. ones that are in here. I'm going to kind of come in with a standard mm -hmm. type of price, uh, maybe 15 maybe $20. Right movie collector might go a little higher, but right. uh, Rich, in general... I'm say between 25 and 40 okay. Judy, thank you so much for your letter. Uh, next, we have Catherine, who wrote to us from Orlando, Florida. And Catherine wrote, enclosed are pictures of a vase that belonged to my mother. The vase measures 11 and a half inches high, the top is 8 and a half inches across, and the bottom is 5 inches. I can find no markings on the vase, but the bottom has a 1 and a half inch round and a quarter inch indentation. My mother had it at least 30 years. Any information appreciated? Well, it certainly looks like a copy of a type of Tiffany Favreal glass. With no markings on it, I'm going to assume that this is not one of those lost pieces of Tiffany what glass. What kind of glass are you talking about? A Tiffany? Well, for real, it has this uh, mm -hmm. this iridescence right. to it. That's that's a name that I guess he came up with. Uh, it's a French name, but I'm not sure exactly what it means. Uh, it's a nice piece of art glass, but again, it's not Tiffany. Right, it's an extremely nice piece of art glass, and I must point out to our viewers at home that this particular image that you're seeing is upside down. <laughs> um, what looks like a very wide base is actually a very wide mouth on this particular piece. I mean, if we piece. turn our and stand on our heads, we can see it right, Rich. Is that what Everyone you're saying? at home, you know, turn your head over and it'll look just fine. Um, but still, a nice, nice piece of art glass, and I'm shocked that it isn't marked or doesn't have any kind of a signature on it. Yeah, I, I, I wish, I wish it did say Tiffany. I wish it was that LTC, and I wish there was a number on it. But um, it creates a mystery when it doesn't have any marking for it. Yeah, you. it does, and it always makes me leery to put a price on it because it looks like a fine piece of glass. Uh, I think I'm going to come in one to two hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. If it's if it is Tiffany, go to a thousand and. Yeah, start okay. going I from agree. there. Nice piece of art glass, two hundred. Okay, we can stop standing on our heads now. And Rose <laughs> wrote to us from uh, Oregon, and she wrote, "Enclosed are pictures of a hand puppet that I got as a child, close to forty years ago. The label reads Princess Aurora, copyright Walt Disney Productions. The other side of the label reads Gund Manufacturing Company. I would like to know the value, and I would entertain offers." I'm at a loss, and, and uh, I, I don't know who Princess Aurora is or which movie or cartoon she was part of. Rich, do you have any idea? Exactly. I think we're going to have to rely on our vast unpaid resource center out there in America to let us know, because I've never heard of Princess Aurora, and it might be an obscure Disney cartoon that really didn't take off right. or, or a Disney short. Somebody out there's right. going to know exactly. about it. Exactly. But Somebody. it looks to be in fantastic condition. I'm not seeing any kind of paint loss or wear on mm -hmm. the puppet, um, mm -hmm. and being an obscure Disney piece, Mr. Who care? Mr. Rogers, that's a possibility. Think so? Um, oh, yeah, of course. That's uh, yeah. Uh, that uh, that's a, a Mr. Rogers. Come character. join us, Karen. That is correct. Uh -huh. Very Thank good. You. Thank Our you, Karen. Professor Karen Martin. <laughs> okay. Mr. Rogers. Okay. There you go. Um, but Even. Produ even appraisers need a little help from their friends sometimes. Exactly, you can't know everything. <laughs> uh, but generally, it's a, it's a good toy. I'm going to say between $75 and $100 because it is so obscure. Yeah, I'm going to come in a little bit more conservatively, 25 to 30 Okay. And next, Pam is on the line for Tacoma, Washington. Hi, Pam. Welcome to the program. Hi. Good to have you with us. Now, you wrote us about your Santa sleigh and reindeer lawn decoration. Yeah. Please tell the audience what you know about it. Um, well, I know we, we bought our house. Um, my husband was out, you know, looking around the barn and everything. Mm -hmm. He saw something up in the rafters and he climbed up there and that's what he found. The sleigh and the reindeer and the Santa Claus. It was real dirty. We brought it down, cleaned it up. You know, there's no markings on it for a date. Um, it, you know, the toys in the bag on Santa Claus look, I don't know, 50-ish or I don't, I mean, they don't make toys like that. Mm -hmm. And that's really all we know about it. We don't exactly know what to do with it, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, let's appraise it for you first, because you say it's 30 inches tall, 56 yeah. inches long by 25 inches wide, yeah. and the reindeer are each four feet tall? Right. Oh, wow. Okay. 
so Re this really good vintage piece mm -hmm. of uh, something you would put out at, at, at Christmas and it's wood not plastic and, and I think it is probably late 40s or early 50s yeah and it's a great size to this mm -hmm. I mean if you have a palatial estate like the Norris estate I mean this is gonna look great <laughs> on your front lawn um, but I'd say mm, boy if you went to an auction and this came up you know right around the holiday time late November early December, could this go? could go you know a hundred to two hundred easily I think I'll tell you I think this could go to 400 mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. to the right buyer I think it is spectacular and the condition it really yeah. is really yes. what does it unbelievable okay. hearing that it could go possibly up towards four hundred dollars would you like to put it up for sale sure okay we'll do that for you and thank you so much for writing to us and being on the line today thank you and when we come back we're gonna be finding out what those big bids are so stay tuned All right. Unfortunately, these women have an overnight flight and a cough. The woman in first class is taking Robitussin DM, while the woman in coach has discovered VIX 44. Compare them. VIX 44 feels more soothing and works longer between doses, up to eight hours, while Robitussin should be taken every four. So despite the better seat, guess who's having the better flight? Eight hour VIX 44. Get the most from just one dose. When it comes to getting in shape, the things we do to our bodies, we jar our joints, pound our limbs, and impact our bodies in ways that can wear us out, aging us before our time. Now, Nordic Track introduces a revolutionary way to get an outstanding aerobic workout without the jarring impact. The new Ellipse, the innovative in-home fitness machine that pioneers the use of elliptical motion. Elliptical motion makes the Ellipse a real fitness breakthrough, one that's better for your body. If the human body were suspended in air, you'd see that it naturally moves in a non-jarring elliptical path. The Nordic Track Ellipse simulates this natural elliptical motion, virtually eliminating harmful impact. But high impact machines like treadmills cut the body's natural motion short, causing impact to the ankles, knees, hips, and back. The Ellipse is a real advancement in fitness. It works both arms and legs for an outstanding total body workout without all the jarring impact. That's why it's the shape that's better for your body. The Ellipse Total Body Exerciser does it all in one fun, easy, and natural motion. With all these features, the patent-pending Ellipse gives you a better workout designed to keep you motivated so you'll see results. Dual rotation lets you work different muscle groups for added variety. Work quads and hips in the forward mode, or glutes and hamstrings in the backward mode. Adjustable elevation lets you push your workouts to the limit. And when you're done, the ellipse folds and rolls away for easy storage. Call Nordic Track now to get a free video and brochure with complete details on the new ellipse. Find out how you can own the ellipse for as low as $29.95 a month. Try the ellipse in your home for 30 days. If you're not completely satisfied, simply return the ellipse for a refund. Your satisfaction is guaranteed. Call now. Discover the new shape in fitness, the new Nordic Track Ellipse. It's the shape that's better for your body. Big, big. <laughs> Why are we all laughing? <laughs> we laughing <laughs> enough said let's get started with those big bids and we'll go out to Duluth Minnesota where uh, Marge brought the Bing Crosby jukebox uh, Marge Bonner from Albany Oregon called in with an offer for you of three hundred and fifty five dollars and fifty cents well I'll think about it all right you do that <laughs> Francis, with the ballerina clock, Lisa from Fresno, California has called in with an offer of $150. I'll think about it. All right. I'll think about it. <laughs> Linda, with the U.S. Navy ring, John from Beverly Hills, Florida called in with an offer of $125. I'm going to take it. <laughs> Scott, with the humble figurine, Mary from Denver, Colorado wants it for $205. Sold. Sold. Oh. Michelle with a porcelain doll, Marilyn from Waynesboro, Virginia, has called in with an offer of $110. I think I'm going to keep it. Okay. Gosh, All right. pretty. Let's go back out to Minnesota. And Gordon, for your lamp, we have an offer from David from Forest Park, Illinois, for $90. No, I think I'll keep it. Thank you. Okay. All right. <laughs> Please do. And Joyce, for the dice and the case, Robert from Seattle is offering you $66. He's got them. 
<laughs> Judy for the Royal Copenhagen Plate, Bart from Center Reach, New York, is offering $100. Sold. Mm -hmm. oh. And Susan, for your frame prints, we have an offer from Tom from Elena, Montana, for $40. Sold. Mm -hmm. All righty. Yes. All right, let's go say goodbye to JD and tell him what a nice job he did today. JD? Hey, thanks a lot, John. We think. Uh, George and Rena did a nice job sure too. Did, yeah. Sure did, Thanks, dear. Tomorrow we're going to be still in Duluth, which is the birthplace of Bob Dylan, and we will have none other than a Bob Dylan collector. That's going to be <laughs> terrific. All right, thanks, JD. <laughs> Thank right. you. And our thanks to our ace gentlemen appraisers of the day, Ron Norris and Rich Zelachowski. Great having you guys here. We hope you all had a good time in the apartment. And to all of you at home, make the most of your day, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. So long, everybody. If you'd like to get in touch with Personal FX, call us at 1-800-FX-FX-FX1, or you can fax us at 212-802-4201. You can share your comments, questions, or be our guest. Dodge Dakota owners are celebrating. A recent J.D. Power & Associates study ranked Dakota most appealing compact pickup. But we believe the price is pretty appealing too. Even when you add all these features to a Dodge Dakota Club cab, there's still plenty of room to carry home a number this big. From California's truck stop, the new Dodge. The smart guy takes on his first case. I'd like to request a recess. How can you think about going outside to play at a time like this? Wednesday at 8.30 on the WB Channel 5. When this mother came home from work, she found her 17-year-old daughter dead. Stabbed 50 times with the knife's.